I gotta be honest with you guys, I absolutely love the Pixel 9, but with the holidays coming up and deals popping up everywhere, a lot of you might be considering the Pixel 8a. I know it's Google's most affordable model in this tech season, but after the release of the Pixel 9, I'm not so sure the 8a is the stellar deal it used to be. So before you buy anything, watch this video because I strongly believe the Pixel 9 is a better value for your dollar in every way. And of course, if you find videos like these helpful, consider subscribing to the 9to5Google YouTube YouTube channel as we have a lot more Android slash Pixel content coming your way. Now, to understand why I want to steer people towards the Pixel 9, I think we need to set the stage a bit. The Pixel 8a came out in May 14th, 2024, about six months ago at this point, and honestly, it did and still does have a lot going for it. It's a strong mid-range device with an affordable price, especially on sale where we saw it as low as $379 during an Amazon sale. And with that, you got the classic Pixel software experience with seven years of updates, smooth performance, and a few feature drops. Plus, the camera system was pretty respectable for its price range. I can't stress it enough, the Pixel 8a is a good phone, but I think a lot of those benefits are overshadowed by the Pixel 9. Let's look at the design, for example. The 8a has that last generation Pixel design with the bubbly, rounded corners and the classic camera bar style that everyone loves. No doubt, this phone has a ton of personality. It feels cozy in the hand, and the matte side rails and matte plastic back give it a super soft touch. Some even described it as being pebble-like in the hand, which I totally agree with, and for some reason it feels much smaller than it actually is, even though it's almost the same exact size as the base Pixel 9. Then you take a look at the new design language, and it's clear Google has gone for a much more modern look. You've heard it a million times at this point, I'm sure, with the flat side rails, the boxy shape, and the island-style camera module. It's a whole new look and feel compared to previous pixels. Of course, the design preference is subjective, and to be fair, the 8a's design is great, especially for a more affordable model, but there's no denying the Pixel 9 has a more refined and mature aesthetic. The display is another area where the Pixel 8a holds up well too. It's a 6.1 inch, 120 hertz OLED display that maxes out at 2000 nits peak brightness, which is awesome for outdoor visibility, and there's also HDR support. Honestly, I have zero complaints on the display as it's sharp, colorful, smooth, and pretty close in quality to the Pixel 9 if we're being real here. Sure, the bezels are a bit unsightly, and yes, the Gorilla Glass 3 display on mine has picked up some pretty big scratches, but for a more affordable device, this is somewhat expected. And the software? Well, there's a lot to like here too. The Pixel 8a nails the core Pixel experience with all the staples like now playing, call screening, spam detection for text, which has helped so much during the election cycle, by the way, plus circle to search and much, much more. Android 15, as small of an update as it was, brought more features too, like theft detection, remote lock, private space, and adaptive vibration. Plus we got the updated Pixel 9 weather app, although it's missing the AI overview for the time being. Speaking of Pixel apps, I'm sad to say we haven't got any of the other new ones released alongside the Pixel 9 series, like Pixel Studio for image generation, and Pixel Screenshots that uses AI to make those more manageable. And and we're not sure when or if those will ever make its way to the Pixel 8a, which is another benefit that the Pixel 9 has over it. All right, let's talk about cameras here as the Pixel 8a uses the same sensor as the 7a, which, let's face it, is getting a bit tired at this point. It's still good, mind you, but it doesn't reach those top tier levels of performance like the Pixel 9 does. That said, Google's computational photography algorithms work their magic here, squeezing every bit of quality out of that aging sensor. But if you're planning on doing Doing a lot of digital zoom past 2 or 3x let's say, or want to take high quality low light shots, the Pixel 9 will give you significantly better results. On the plus side, the Pixel 8a can still take advantage of Google's signature camera features like Magic Editor, Audio Magic Eraser, which was newly added in a feature drop, and Face Unblur, but it's still missing some of the newer additions like Reimagine with Magic Editor, Add Me, and Super Res Zoom Video. Either way, for the average everyday shooter, I think the 8a's cameras will be a solid performer, but again, this is where the Pixel 9 pulls ahead as it uses a newer computational photography algorithm and has a significantly better ultrawide lens which should serve you well for many years to come. So on the surface, the Pixel 8a seems like a competitive device, but you do need to know that this phone does carry some of the core issues from the last generation that thankfully Google fixed with the Pixel 9. For one, thermals and heat management are significantly better on the Pixel 9. The AA's Tensor G3 chip, while decent performance wise still has that last gen tendency to get warm and be inefficient. 
Cellular performance is another area where we see last gen issues as the 8A can experience more heat and battery drain while on data, something largely resolved in the Pixel 9 series. And let's not forget the older, less reliable optical fingerprint scanner on the 8A compared to the ultrasonic one on the Pixel 9. To be clear, it is a notable difference in speed and accuracy with significantly less unlock failures, probably one of my favorite additions of the Pixel 9. I almost forgot though, the charging speeds are also a big pain point for me regarding the Pixel 8a. I realize not everyone cares about this as most people just charge their devices overnight, but if for some reason you need to top up in the middle of the day, good luck. Wired speeds are fine at 18 watts, getting from 0 to 100 in maybe an hour and 40 minutes, while the wireless speeds are absolutely abysmal at 7.5 watts, which can get from 0 to 100 in maybe 2 to 3 hours. It's not a huge deal, but another metric that will be massively inconvenient over the Pixel 9 if you care about that kind of stuff. To keep it simple, the Pixel 9 offers so much more value for your dollar, and if you want to look at it price-wise, the cheapest we've seen the Pixel 9 is $500 $50 on sale, which is only $50 more than the regular 8A at normal price, and with a trade-in promotion, you could probably get it a lot cheaper. Of course, the same could definitely be said about the Pixel 8A too. The lowest price that we've seen that phone at is $379, which is a stellar deal for that price, but if you're asking for advice, just treat yourself and get the better device at a discount. The Pixel 8A is a fine phone, don't get me wrong, and if you're upgrading from the 6 or 7 series, it is a good buy. Or if you're in a country where pixels in general are overpriced, the 8A is good there as well. On the other hand, if my family members asked me what phone to get and they only had 379, I would tell them to save up the difference and catch the Pixel 9 on sale. Assuming you can get it for $550, we're talking about a price difference of $171, which is well worth it to me for the benefits you receive. And as a side note, I would not wait or even consider the Pixel 9a because it's reported to use the older modem, which is the number one most glaring issue of Pixels of the past, in my opinion. Either way, I know that was a lot, but let me know your thoughts. Do you agree the Pixel 9 is worth the few extra bucks during a good sale, or is the savings on the Pixel 8a worth the sacrifices? Leave a comment and let us know, but in the meantime, I'm getting out of here. Before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, we appreciate every one of you guys for supporting the channel as we work super hard to make the best Android content on the platform. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.